Get your mustard ready. We've got the Atlanta Falcons. What's cool and what is going on? We are going to be talking about the Atlanta Falcons, the Dirty Birds. So let's get into it. Starting off with the free agent signings. So it all begins for Captain Kirk Cousins here in Atlanta. I'm really excited. I'm a big Captain Kirk Cousins fan. Michigan State, let's go. But I, I think he comes in. He's a top 10 quarterback in my eyes in the NFL. He's going to bring stability to this quarterback room. And their supporting cast is solid. Yeah, you need, you know, maybe another receiver. I uh, could use a little bit, of, you know, definitely need some defensive help. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But overall, I think he's going to come right in. And the contract was not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. 45 average, that's not terrible. It really isn't for Kirk Cousins. As I was talking about, I think he is a borderline top 10 quarterback. Can he win the big one? Obviously, those question marks still surround him. I think he can. And for this deal, it's only two years technically that's guaranteed. So if, if it goes wrong, if it doesn't work out, you know, it's two years. You can draft and develop a quarterback. I'm really excited. And then wide receiver, you had in Dornell Mooney. Big sign here. Three years, $39 million. It's a lot of money. And Mooney, coming off a down year, I still, the talent is there, right? He can be a good Z slash move him in the slot, move him around with Rondell Moore, get creative. He could be a good deep threat for your team to go along with Drake London. So it makes sense in terms of the type of receiver that they're looking at in Darnell Mooney. Two years of the contract being guaranteed. Not super bad. Don't love it, but at the same time, it's a solid addition. I do think Mooney's way better than he was last season for the Bears, which, you know, again, their passing game, you know. Uh, Ray Ray McLeod, Cordell Hodge, more depth on the roster. McLeod. Good special teamer, return man, so that's why he gets the two-year deal, I would imagine. Cordell Hodge being back. Charlie Warner, three-year deal. He's a solid backup to have behind Kyle Pitts. Can do some of the dirty work. And then defensively, only one signing so far. Kavaria Street, he's a good situational pass rusher on the interior. Let's go on to the roster needs now and start off with the offensive line. And for me, tackle of the future could be something we look at here. Jake Matthews getting a bit older. Keelan McGarry is he's good he, he did play really well actually as the season went along he struggled at the beginning of the season and pass protection he still gets beat so he's some speed his hand placement too but he's a road grader in the run game he's a down blocking machine let me just tell you that right now he's got some really good high level blocks and he did play better than saying as the season went along as a pass protector and he's under contract too and both of these guys are under contract in 2025 so it's not a high priority need but you could draft a guy to develop, maybe a young guy that, you know, maybe say, hey, one, two years, we can find a developing right tackle or left tackle of the future. And Storm Norton, he is there as well, which doesn't make this a huge priority. He's a good quality swing tackle, but definitely long term, he's only on a one year deal. Center is another area that they could look at for sure. Drew Dahlman is a free agent after this season. Maybe you want to get a little bit stronger there, a little bit better in the pass protecting department. Drew Dahlman's also a great run blocker, but, you know, pass protection, he can get by some of those stronger nose tackles. So maybe you're adding some, some depth in the interior in general at the guard slash center position. Javon Gwynn was a right guard at South Carolina. I list him at center, but you know, you could find somebody in that mold there. On to the wide receiving core and... I do think they still need to invest here. This is still a day two type of priority need for me, especially they've got three day two picks. So I would be looking to spend one of those at the wide receiver position. And then tight end, you should be good to go. I mean, this is a late round pick maybe, but between Kyle Pitts, fully healthy now. Okay, that's going to be huge. And you got a quarterback, Charlie Warner as a backup. You got John Fitzpatrick maybe as a third blocking guy, Tucker Fisk. I'm not super worried about that. So wide receiver is going to be the priority for me in terms of draft needs somewhere on a day two. On to the running back position, Bijan Dijon. You got Tyler Algier. You had a really good one-two punch. So I'm not worried about this running back room at all. And as Raheem Morris was talking about, let's get the marketing department in on B. John Robinson. He was just talking. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I'm pumped. I was just listening to Raheem Morris. But on to the quarterback position. Kirk Cousins, no need here for me. Maybe a third stringer at the end of the draft, a draft and developmental guy, maybe a draft, even a backup, something like that. So this is a late third quarterback option. On to the defense side of the ball and defensive line, edge rusher. It's it's a top need on this team, in my opinion. You need an edge rusher. You need a number one edge guy. So expect that to be an early priority for this team. On the Bikini, I think he's ready to step up into more of a starter role this next season. Lorenzo Carter, nice situational player, rotational, good, strong, you know, can be a run defender, can, you know, make plays for sure. I just would be looking to add here, right? This is the top need. Interior defense lines for the future, right? You could definitely add some. I don't know if it's a huge need. You got good foot players with uh, Grady Jarrett, David Onyemata, Zach Harrison heading to year number two. You got Kaveri Street, Taekwon Graham, 
rotational players, Lacal London. Overall, it's a future type of need there. I'm not as worried as the edge position, which is a early code red alert. On to the linebacking core. Caden Ellis, Nate Lamb, and the hitman. I love Nate Lamb, and dude is so instinctual. If he was more athletic, he'd be a top linebacker in the NFL. I guarantee it. Dude is so good and instinctual. And Troy Anderson, not a need in my opinion. Nate Lamb is a free agent. I don't think he'd be super expensive to bring back, and I would try to bring him back. We'll see how much Raheem Morris prioritizes the linebacker position. Maybe it's a late round type of throw. I just don't see it being that big. I have a scheme knee, especially with the linebacking core that they have right now, which looks good for me. Cornerback, this is a need. This is a priority for me. This is something day two. They need at least some competition in this room. I like Clark Phillips, and I think he's going to be just fine. Like Raheem Morris is the perfect scheme for him. But I will be looking to add. I want to add some more firepower to this room. You got Mike Hughes as kind of your backup right now. D. Alford, nice slot corner. He's a free agent next year. A.J. Terrell, obviously, is your number one. And he's a free agent next year. And an extension works, I'm sure. They'll, they'll have the money to bring him back. It just, I want to get that fourth, fifth guy to be some nice competition. Slash future need, upgrade, all those type of things. And then safety. This could be area they throw it later in the draft, something like a hybrid nickel, hybrid slot corner or safety, something like that at the end, but not a huge knee with Jesse Bates being your number one. And Ndameko Helms playing so well at the end of the season. I still wish Rich Grant as a starter, but I think Demeco Helms may end up winning that job in training camp. He won the job at the end of the season. We'll see how it all works out, but Demeco Helms... Uh, Jesse Bates and Richie Grant as your rotation of three. The moment you've all been waiting for. It's draft time. So let's go ahead, talk about this number eight overall pick. It's a rusher, Dallas Turner. Shocker? Well, you know, they need a pass rusher. Whether it's Leatu Latu, Jared Verse, Dallas Turner, you grab one of those top edge guys. And for me, Dallas Turner, I do think will end up being the top edge rusher off the board with the traits, right? He's 21 years old. He's the youngest out of the group of those three. And the tools, the almost 35-inch arms, the 4-4 speed, the upside with Dallas Turner is through the roof. And I mean, as a floor, too, he's going to be a day one impact for this team. They need a pass rusher. They need a number one guy to pair along with Arnold Abicati. And yeah, I think Dallas Turner can absolutely do that off the edge. And we go on to round number two, Max Melton. One of my favorite prospects in this class. I know this may be a little bit high for him, but I, I have him as a late round one guy. That's just me, but huge Max Melton fan. He's somebody that comes in this room, brings that feisty mentality in the run game. He's super fluid. He's a good athlete. His coverage instincts and zone coverage, off coverage, it's there, man. And I think he's going to fit right into the scheme, give you some more competition on the outside with Clark Phillips. And hey, I think long term, he could be a, you know, a forcer in the slot. If you, you know, D. Alford, you could give him more competition too. And he's a free agent next year. Some, you know, people slide him into the slot, view him more as a slot corner, and that's fine. I think he's going to be really good wherever he ends up landing. I love him in this scheme, too, and Raheem Morris. On to Jalen McMillan, wide receiver, Washington. This guy is a no-nonsense, 700 to 1,000-yard wide receiver that's a plug-and-play, day-one starter, in my opinion. And he's going to be rotation with Rondell Moore, but very much high floor, dude. He's a good route runner. He knows how to separate. He's just strong in all departments. I mean, he doesn't have the monster wings, man. I thought he could have made a couple of, you know, he made really tough competitive catches. He had a couple of concentration drops that I thought he could have made, which is kind of funny. Like he had the really tough contested catches, but he had a couple of catches where I'm like, hmm, he could have caught that. But McMillan is a really good wide receiver. He's one of those guys you just don't overthink it. He's going to come into this room and add a good playmaker. No nonsense for Kirk Cousins. Let's go on back to Washington. Roger Rosengarden. Here's your developmental tackle. And I do think, you know, whether it's left tackle, right tackle, I think he's got the foot speed. That's not what I'm worried about. He's a super athletic guy. He's also a really young prospect to develop. And obviously, you take out the Michigan game. For me, he would have been a, like a top, you know, 50 prospect. But you get him as a developmental prospect for a few years and see what you got. And, and who knows, right? And if he ends up being, winning that job, great. You can get cheaper, get a little bit younger at the tackle position. On to Dwayne Carter, Duke, interior defense alignment. He played literally everywhere on that defense line at Duke, whether it was nose, edge, like the dude moved around. And I love that versatility he brings along. You can line him up anywhere. And he's got really good power. And he, you know, he needs to work on his first step and his pass rush plan or his pass rush moves. I think those are the big things. He's really just a bull rusher right now. Definitely a guy, though, I'd like to draft and develop behind David Onyemata and Grady Jarrett and, and think about a guy that can end up being a starter on that defensive line for the future. On to round number five, Matt Lee from Miami, the Hurricane. 
And he's kind of, oh, it's funny, he's a little bit of the opposite of Drew Dahman in ways. He's super powerful. He can just kind of like take bull rushers and stuff like that, anchor to power and stuff like that, where he's maybe not as good in the run game as Drew Dahlman. But definitely somebody comes in here as a nice backup and works into maybe that starting role. If, if you can't pay Drew Dahlman after the season, et cetera, who knows how that's going to work out. But a little bit of development on the interior of the offensive line. On to round number six, Jordan Travis. My, one of my favorite quarterbacks, actually, in this class. I'm, I, I'm a little bit of a Knowles fan, as you know, and whatnot. But I'm a really big fan of Jordan Travis. And, and what, the way, just the way he played, man. He's super accurate. He's a fun quarterback to watch. He's dynamic. Yeah, he doesn't have the crazy tools. But he's just, man, I, I think he's going to work out, if nothing else, as a quality backup in the NFL. So I have him as a third-round grade. I, I mean, it just comes down to the injuries. I think he's going to go later in the draft. So if you can get him at the end of the draft, I'm doing that 100% to be a backup and a developmental piece behind Kirk Cousins. And then on to our final pick, Andre Sam, LSU. Had to throw in the Marshall pick. He was transferred over, but Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. He gives you that slot safety hybrid ability. Maybe he can be like a Quentin Lake for Raheem Morris. Who knows? Something like that. But give you some more depth in the secondary. They can also play split safety. Finally, to conclude everything, looking at the roster after the draft, what we've been able to do, areas we focused in on. Offensively wise, we focused in, we got another receiver. Jalen McMillan going to give more competition in this wide receiving room with Rondell Moore. Now I feel good about the four or five receivers you have between Jalen McMillan, Cordell Hodge. That's kind of your depth. Ray Ray McLeod, special teamer. And then offensive line, we had a Matt Lee, Roger Rosengarden, future offensive lineman, right? Rosengarden, future tackle. Matt Lee, hopefully future center, or at least developing on the interior of the offensive line. Backup quarterback, Jordan Travis. Let's go. I love it. But he can be your long-term backup. Defensively wise, adding in that number one edge rusher. It's that priority, and it's Dallas Turner. He comes in as a day one impact, day one starter to go along with Arnold Epicati, Lorenzo Carter, rotational D'Angelo Malone as well. He might actually, Malone might have a breakout year in Raheem Morris' scheme. We'll see. And then Dwayne Carter on the interior for the future. Add another rotational player on the interior. And then cornerback-wise, we add in a Max Milton. And then Andre Sam, I list as like a hybrid there. Can play in the slot and also play safety. But put him there. Max Milton, though, going to be competing for a starter job. Whether that's outside, whether that's in the slot. Injuries arise, you know. So having that depth is, is majorly important to go along with Mike Hughes. And thinking about the future, too, because... I mean, the only cornerback that is under contract is Clark Phillips at the moment. So that's something you got to think about. Overall, that is it here for these, this Atlanta Falcon mock draft. Let me know what you think, agree or disagree. What would you do differently for the Dirty Birds? And I hope you guys have a really good day. Go get your Bijan, Dijon mustard out there. I'll talk to you later.